the fight for a spot in the first ever Overwatch Champion Series International LAN event is on the line, with all three regions participating in the biggest events of the year so far. In yesterday's video, we covered how it's going to go in Asia, and it's pretty simple with just the top two finishers making it to Dallas automatically, but the Stage 2 main event in both EMEA and NA are a bit more interesting, and they hold a lot of weight to it, even more than what we saw in Stage 1. We're focusing in on EMEA first though, as the results seem like they could not only be more widespread, but also this is a very competitive region overall. It seems like they're obvious favorites going into this, but all it takes is one miracle run and everything could get thrown out of order. And I say that because EMEA only has three spots up for grabs in terms of who's going to Dallas, and it just so happens that whoever wins this tournament is automatically going there without question regardless of how many circuit points they have, which is ultimately the thing that decides who qualifies for these big events. To give you a better idea, here's currently what the EMEA standings look like. Twisted Minds, Ents, and Space Station occupy the top three. They would be the ones going to Dallas if it started today. But Space Station, for example, thanks to their shortcomings in Stage 1, do not have a super comfortable lead by any means. If they fail to get top 4 in this tournament, and they get kicked out in like that 5 6 place, let's say, then suddenly, if a team like Peps play extraordinarily well, their team on the rise, they could be the ones that get into the top three over Space Station. There's no guarantees. It probably shouldn't be an issue. We know who should be the best teams, but the group stage for both regions so far have held a lot of surprising results. And if that wackiness carries on into the main event here, well, we just might end up being very surprised. Let's dive right into this. There's a lot of exciting stuff to cover. First things first, just some general info for more of the casual viewers who want to understand everything. Basically, stage two is going to work the exact same way as stage one, eight team double elim bracket over the next four days or so going from April 25th through April 28th. They're going to be playing on the most recent patch of the game. But again, I must reiterate that Venture will not be available for play. We will not see them until Dallas at the earliest if they're even good enough to be a part of a pro composition to begin with. Oh, and just because I really care about y'all, I wanted to bring this up. Didn't know about it in the previous stage, but for day one of this tournament, not all of the games will be broadcasted live on the official Overwatch Esports channel. So if there's a certain game you're looking for that's not live, you may still be able to catch it. Check out either the Bad Patchy Mari League channel and our OBS Sojourn. They're both great resources. When it comes down to this bracket and our participants, the eight teams to make it out of the groups are as follows. We have Space Station, Peps, Peace and Love, Diempero, Ents, Super Shy, Twisted Minds, and Aw oh Yeah. Here's a brief breakdown of how the groups went so you get a better idea of how you should be feeling about these teams overall. In Group A, we'd see Space Station and Super Shy prevail. Space Station looked very, very good compared to an iffy stage one beforehand. They were dominant in the Swiss. They were dominant in the groups. They look ready to go. This is a supercharged, confident team that are in their element. And they seem like they have this Orisa comp down now. They even throw a little bit of ride into the mix as well. They seem comfortable. They seem happy. They have a better grip on things now. And I think with how they're playing, they could very easily end up winning this tournament. They have been the most consistent, even beating Twisted Minds and Ends during the Swiss stage beforehand. It's been a while since we've seen them play, and you never know when a meltdown is going to happen, but they're in a great place right now. That much is certain. But joining them out of Group A was surprisingly super shy, a team that showed a lot of potential, a lot of flashes during the Stage 1 Swiss stage. Once again, let me reiterate that they took a map and had a close series against Twisted Minds, who would go on to win that stage. And here, they would show even more improvement by knocking out Ex Oblivione, taking their place by beating them in a close five map series. It was a shocker for sure, but they earned it. They looked quite good out there. This team stuck together, they added in a couple of new players, and they worked hard at it. And I think because of that experience they gained, and the fact that Ex Oblivione were maybe a bit on the downward trend as they're figuring out their tank situation, that they were able to fully take advantage and be the better team in that series. And it'll be interesting as underdogs to see if they can take it a step further now in that lower bracket. 
In Group B, we'd see Ents and Team Peps prevail, and they were the major storylines to pay attention to in this one. Sheer Cold and One Man Army stood no chance. It was these guys all the way. They played a super intense matchup in their groups, where we almost saw Peps defeat Ents and make it out as the top seed in Group B. They got so close, just out of nowhere, showing some incredible skill, showing great improvement compared to the previous stage. They added in a couple of new pieces, and it really benefited them. Exodial Tread and Level 1 Crook all joined this squad during the brief offseason period, and oh my goodness, they look so much better with these players in the game, all making significant contributions towards their success and having a competitive series against Ents. And a lot of people have been asking, were Ents off their game? Were they choking? In my opinion, the answer is no. Peps genuinely looked good out there. They looked like a solid team that is worthy of being in this tournament, that is worthy of potentially going on a deep run as a dark horse team that you don't want to run into. Not only are the new pieces benefiting them and they're working well with the old ones, but also they just feel more confident when you watch them now. They look aggressive. They're not going to back down. And as an underdog, that's the mentality you have to have. You can't be scared of these big teams just because they're better. And Peps showed absolutely no backing down. I'm telling you, with the talent they have on this team and some of the stuff they figured out, don't be surprised if they sneak into that top four, if not even better. Just the fact that they made it to a map five with Ents alone is enough proof of that. On the side of Ents, maybe you could say it's a cause for concern that they played a team that isn't Twisted Minds or Space Station in a close series this early on in the groups. But honestly, again, a lot of respect goes to Peps first and foremost, but also sometimes getting that scare out early can really help calm your nerves for a big event like this. It only makes you stronger. They're still the same team. They have Chase as well. Maybe they choose to incorporate him. Maybe they don't, but they should be strong if they just stick to their tried and true, like we saw on that Pep series. If they stick to what they know, let Kevster cook on the tracer, they should still be a threat and very capable of being first place. In Group C, we'd see Twisted Minds and Diempero get out. Really not much of a competition for Twisted Minds. No team that really stacks up to them over there in Group C. No scares. They looked okay out there. But what was interesting about how they played is that they are not very interested in playing that Orisa composition. They're still all in on the Mauga comp in the Symmetra. That's just what they know. That's what they're comfortable with. That's what Twisted Minds does. They have their own style of play that they think works, that best suits them. And so far it has done okay for them, but I'm interested to see how that will translate when they play some of these top dogs like Ents and Space Station potentially later down the line. Is this style still going to work? Is it going to confuse them? Or are they going to fall behind as the meta slowly but surely moves away from them? Their strengths that comes with this as it's hard to prepare for them. We've seen what they can do on the fly. They really make things unexpected and confusing with their choices at times. They're excellent at adjusting to an opponent. I will give them that much. But oh man, this is probably going to be their biggest challenge yet. Then there's Diempero, the other Group C team to make it through. These guys may not seem like anything of a big deal on paper, but they're someone that's worth monitoring, as they've shown some very steady and quick progress as a group. They're one of those teams that's young, that you don't expect much from, but just find a way to do it. They're on that road right now, and I think in the future, if not now, they could become even scarier. They are someone who kind of had a shortcoming in stage one. In the Swiss, they didn't qualify, they didn't make the cut, but now here they are, not only getting through that, but also groups, overcoming multiple hurdles to now be a main event team. That is some great progress from a young team, they've got some good heads on their shoulders, they've got solid coaching and leadership as well. These are guys that I think could make for a good story, even if they don't do too well in this particular bracket. And finally, in Group D, we'd see Peace and Love and Aw oh Yeah make it through. Rip to my Ataraxia prediction, as well as Ex Oblivione, pretty wrong on those ones. But man, this was a fun group to watch. There were some very interesting and close games throughout. 
We saw some ups and downs, like with All Yeah going from getting absolutely dismantled to winning a surprising game against Ataraxia. They're the fun team that everybody's going to want to watch. They're like the Chengdu portion of EMEA, where they're so random and different than everybody else that you just can't help but root for these guys. They couldn't make it through in Stage 1, they choked against Sheer Cold, but now here they are, ready to seek revenge, ready to prove us all wrong. Kayat the Junkrat Goat is here. He has arrived, and he's played alongside Chasm, a Wrecking Ball player. That's right, they've got a Wrecking Ball Junkrat composition that is a consistent play for them. We are going to bear witness to that at least two times before they get eliminated, and that's pretty goaded. As for the more dominant, and I guess you could say serious team from Group D, you have Peace and Love who had a very interesting set of games, one looking dominant, then the other having a close call against Ataraxia, but showing clutchness when it mattered, as they seem to do in the Swiss stage as well. This team is really fun, and they low-key could end up making that top four, just because they're a solid roster. They're a group of friends, they have the synergy and the confidence. It seems like they don't scrim as much as some of these other guys, it's more so just for fun, so there's less pressure on them, and we've seen that do them some good so far. And with the path they have in in front of them, I don't know why it wouldn't continue to be successful for them. I mean, really, out of all of the teams that you'd consider to be underdogs, so to speak, it seems like they're maybe one of the better ones on paper right now, with Apik in that back line, not to mention the Norwegian legend himself, Psycho at DPS, who looked absolutely amazing during the groups. When it comes to favorites and where you'd rank these teams, I mean, clearly it's just going to be Space Station and Ends and Twisted Minds at the top. Space Station literally have not lost a game yet since Stage 2 has begun. They've looked really, really good out there, and I see no reason why they couldn't get to that title game here. It seems like the redemption arc is starting, and that they're locked in like during the London playoff days. I see it in their eyes. They look good in that Orisa comp. They look scary. They beat both Twisted Minds and Ents during the Swiss. We know that they can beat those guys with their current level of play, so they're going to be scary. And then I'd say maybe slightly behind right now would be Ends and Twisted Minds. Again, both lost to Space Station, both still really good. Could beat them on any day for sure. Ents, maybe, you know, they have a bit more star power right now, a bit more certainty behind them as well, despite the struggles against Peps, just because, again, they have the same team, really. They don't even have to play Chase, but Twisted Minds, on the other hand, are adjusting to a meta that isn't exactly in their favor anymore, plus a new main support as well. But all three of them could definitely take home that number one. They're all just really stacked rosters on paper. Twisted Minds always plays well when the lights are at their brightest. Ends have arguably the best player in all of EMEA and Kevster. And then Space Station maybe right now the best overall team. I don't think any of the other teams would win. It doesn't seem likely. I mean, maybe there's an outside shot that Peps could elevate to a crazy level, but they have to at least beat one of these teams first to truly get to that tier. So I'd say most people would argue that they're going to be a tier below, maybe alongside Peace and Love. This is what my general power rankings look like right now. Again, I've established the top three. Honestly, you could put them in any order, but I think that Space Station have got to be on top based off of the results that we've seen so far in Stage 2. Then after that, number four and a bit of a tear break, you gotta go with Peps. You can maybe argue Peace and Love here as well. They're also really solid. But what I like about Peps is that their stocks are just heavily on the rise after that game against Ends. I feel like it's a no-brainer to put them at least into that top five with how good they look right now. Maybe they were just having a good week. Maybe I'm very wrong about these guys, but my confidence is super duper high right now. Then I'd say Peace and Love 5, also a pretty good threat to maybe get into that top four. And then it's kind of everybody else. Honestly, though, that fourth array could basically go any way. Maybe aside from all, yeah, maybe I'm not giving them enough credit, but it seems like if any of those guys were to meet against each other, it could result in some close games, and maybe one of them go on a miracle run and possibly pull off an upset against the big three. I'm looking at you, Peps, and Peace and Love in particular, though. And this is kind of how my bracket looks while we're on the topic of it. In the end, I am just going to pick Space Station to win. I like where they're at as a team right now. I think they've got a good read on this meta. I think they're finally confident, unlike what we maybe saw in Stage 1, where there were some rumblings and some tough games against Ex Oblivione. They've cleared all of that. They've proven they can compete with the top dogs now. They are the team to beat, and I think they're going to take it home. 
I wouldn't be surprised if they don't, but I think bare minimum they're gonna get to that final, barring a massive choke. And the team they beat in that final is Twisted Minds. Maybe a surprise, because I've been very doubtful and skeptical of them, but knowing them, they'll find a way to do it. They've been the most relevant team in EMEA literally for like two years at this point, and whenever the lights are at their brightest, they just play better. It's like they have a buff. They're so clutch. They all have that clutch gene. We see everybody play out of their minds from courts on the sojourn to you be even making huge plays as well this team is just built for these moments and i think they're going to find a way to triumph over ends somehow some way knowing them they'll have a plan maybe they get upset early on but then they'll adjust as they always seem to do like the malga composition i feel like in theory should just lose to the orissa nine times out of ten but they're going to find an answer. They're going to swap it up. They're going to play Ram or whatever it is that they do. They're going to confuse people to no end. And their guys are just simply going to play better. That's what we know them as. And I'm not going to go against it just yet until proven otherwise. Even if in the back of my mind, I'm not as confident in them as a team in this stage compared to the last. And yes, I think that if Peps and Ents somehow met each other in like a lower bracket final scenario, that Peps is going to win. I don't know what it is. I feel like I've got to take some kind of risk and not go the boring route with just the same top three. I just, I don't know, man. I feel like after the last time, they really want to beat those guys and they can pull it off. They've shown me they can. Maybe Ents will wake up on the wrong side of the bed, especially if they get to the lower bracket so early on. I can just see it happening, man. It gives me strong flashbacks to Ex Oblivione versus SSG in stage one. We could be in for the same exact thing if they meet each other. Even that isn't a guarantee, though. I'm just going to be a little spicy, though, because why not? Regardless, I think something wacky is going to happen in this tournament. We've seen so much of that in Stage 2 throughout both regions where it almost feels inevitable. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide where you think that upset is going to happen, but it seems more likely now than it ever has before. This bracket could be very wrong. Definitely take it with a grain of salt. I'm expecting for a lot of things to not go my way, as they typically do with these things. I mean, the winner, who really knows, right? I'm confident in Space Station, just because now Twisted Minds aren't as strong IMO, but that doesn't mean everything is going to line up for these guys. I mean, really, just about any of the top teams could win this. And you never know what some of these bottom teams will do as well. You don't know what the pressure is going to do to some of these guys. I mean, there's so many variables that go into it. And that's part of why I am super hyped for this region's tournament. This one is so big. I mean, EMEA might be the most interesting and competitive region of all compared to all the others. And it's why I highly, highly recommend tuning in and watching some of these matchups it's gonna be some good overwatch let me know what you think about this region and who you think's gonna win down in the comments below i'd love to hear from you let me know what other questions and predictions you have as well give this video a like and subscribe if you want more owcs content just like this and i'll catch you next time peace